Good evening and welcome to Showtime TV. I'm your host, Omar Rashida. Today, I got a very, very special guest. He's a newly author. He's a community activist. Everybody knows his brother. He's a good brother. Uh, brother Hani Salam, good evening. And thank you for being a guest on Showtime TV. Thank you, good brother. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure to be here with you tonight. Okay, okay. So let's let, let first start off. You, you wrote a book called uh, Four Keys to, to Success. Um, before we get into what the book is about, uh, just tell us what, what, what prompts you to, to write the book? Well, you know, being born and raised in Wilmington and overcoming the situations and circumstances that I did to get to where I'm at today, where I work uh, uh, for the ACLU of Delaware as a campaign manager. Um, I have worked for the Hope Commission and other programs within reentry for over the past 15 years. Um, I just wanted to inspire some people and share some things that I learned along the way to be successful and let others know that they could be successful too, even if things don't always seem as if they should be right now there are some things you could do to ensure that you're successful in the future. Right, right. So um, just give us an overview of what, what, what the book's about. When people purchase the book, um, what is it that they can look for? Definitely. So the four keys to success is about four principles that I believe if anyone reads the book and implements these four principles into their life will achieve a higher level of success. And those four principles are purpose, plan, focus, and motivational factor, right? Now, if you read the book, it will help you to explore and identify exactly what your purpose is, how you could create a plan to fulfill your purpose, how you stay focused on that plan by using motivational factors. But I can't give you no more than that, good brother. Yeah, I get the book. You get a lot more than that. But it's based around those four principles. And those are four principles that I've done in my life, like over and over and over again. Like, I understand my purpose to be to help as many people as I possibly can who came from similar situations to me to overcome their barriers to success. So I've done that through creating programs, by doing workshops, by consulting with people. But now that I have a book that individuals could obtain themselves and implement some of those principles to achieve success in their life. Right. So what, 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 um, how long did it take you to write the book? I guess, so writing a book is hard. And I tell you, the hardest thing about writing a book, good brother, is start. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so I, I had the idea in my mind. And I said I was going to do it for maybe like years, maybe three or four years. Mm -hmm. But after I sat down one day and started writing the book, it took about a week. And then within five days, uh, within a business week, I was finished writing. And then I had to start the process of, you know, getting it proofread and published. Right, right. Uh, you mentioned uh, prison reentry, um, and there's a lot of individuals, unfortunately, who, who, who went to prison um, and they have criminal backgrounds. And so that could be a barrier. Well, that is a barrier for, for, for a lot of people because, you know, they go look for employment or look for housing. People say they got a criminal background and automatically they, they may be shut down. So, so, so someone who, who has a criminal background, unfortunately, they come to you and they say, Brother Anif, listen, man. For for uh, success, man, I ain't no success in front of me. Man, I, I applied for jobs, I got, I can't get nowhere, um, I can't get no housing, I can't get monthly entitlements because I got a criminal record. So there, there's no hope for me. How, how do you respond? Well, the first thing I would say to that individual is we got to talk about why you feel like you can't be successful because I did it under those conditions, right? And I've helped hundreds, maybe thousands overcome their barriers to success. And I don't knock any way, anyone because there are some people in this city of Wilmington in the state of Delaware and across the country that are in rough circumstances and sometimes do run into a lot of barriers. But one thing I recognize in a lot of people is you have to get in tune with your purpose in life. See, your purpose in life ain't just to get a job because you fresh out. 
right? Your purpose in life is not just to get a job at McDonald's or get a job wherever you can because you got charges. You got to get more in tune with your purpose because, I mean, you can't tell me just because your situation, you can't do what you want to do. Tyler Perry's a billionaire. When he started, he was homeless. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. I got right. felony in the jails doing workshops. I've started evidence-based programs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can't tell me just because you got charges or you got a felony, you can't get ahead. And I've been looking for part-time work. There are entry-level, low-skilled jobs that are hiring right now. So you have to put in that effort, that same effort you put in that got you into the trouble that you was getting in, you got to put in 10 times that effort to do things the right way. Right, right. So so, so going back to pre, uh, President Reentry Program, um, just to familiarize myself as well as the audience, um, when you're involved in a prison reentry program, do, do, do they assist you with uh, completing job application? Because there, there are those, you know, they might have been in prison so long, man. It's, it's just not like filling out a piece of paper. Now, now you got to go to the internet and you, you got to you know, fill out applications on the internet. Um, you got to come with references. You, you got to develop a resume. So, in a prison reentry program, do do they have workers to, to assist with that? Definitely, employment is a key uh, component in reentry. I know. Um, when I was at the Women's to Hope Commission, and even now employment is emphasized. I know that the Delaware Center for Justice has case managers that do a great job with helping individuals navigate their barriers so they could become employed. Um, there's Project uh, New Start uh, with Priscilla Turgan and Brian Eileen, who are doing great work working with guys who are at in prison and then at work release and then again upon release, really honing in on not just employability skills and workforce development, but also cognitive behavior therapy, changing the way a person thinks. You know, so there are programs, but in my opinion, the state could be doing more to help other uh, 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 ambitious or, or starting programs to expand to be able to service the people. There are definitely not enough reentry services for the amount of individuals that we have coming home. There are way too many people trying to navigate these barriers uh, by themselves. And I think that's where a lot of people get in trouble. Right. Uh, so going back to, to the book for a moment, um, who, who's your target population in regards to who, who you want to purchase the book or, or who's the book written for? Let me be clear. This book is for anybody that's trying to achieve a higher level of success. That's why it's short. <laughs> And kind of to the point, in my opinion, right? This book is less than 20 pages, but I guarantee any reader who reads the book and utilizes the examples to implement the four keys into their life will take their life to a higher level of success. I mean, it's proven. I mean, it's not just what I came up with or what I thought about, like people who truly know their purpose, some of the most successful people in this country, in this world, they are in tune with their purpose in life. And they apply so much focus to fulfilling that purpose that their dreams become a reality and they uh, continue to have higher levels of success as long as they stay focused and determined. Right. You know, but, you know, when we look at success and we look at purpose, a lot of us have dreams and aspirations and goals, but we, we respect, we, I guess we think that some of us have the mindset that, you know, it's just going to come. Uh, so if you could just speak for a moment about people putting in the, the work, because if, if you want to make it, you got you to sacrifice, you got to make some commitment, you got to take risks. <laughs> I mean, just talk about the, the process it takes to be successful. Because sometimes we, we think if we do step one and step two, that's all we got to do and everything's going to come, but it's, it's not that easy all the time. <laughs> No, definitely. See, one thing you got to be, I learned, man, is you got to be in it for longevity. You have a long-term goal. You know, time goes by. So just to have things, whatever you want to do this week, this month, this year, that's not enough, man. You got to plan out seven years, 14 years, 21 years, especially if you plan to be on this earth and you plan to be successful on this earth. That's for one. For two, you have to have a good work ethic. It's something I like to say, good brother, like you can't have champagne dreams with a beer work ethic, right? So if you aspire to do great things and you desire to do 
uh, uh, and achieve great things in this earth, then you have to put in that work ethic. It's something that Denzel Washington said that sticks with me. He said, the bridge between uh, goals and accomplishments is hard work and consistency. So that's all I try to do is work as hard as I can and do a little bit more each day. Right, right. And just one more thing about the prison entry program. And I know we talked about them assisting with jobs, but some people uh, would prefer to do a training like, like in plumbing or, or carpentry or, or painting or some, some sort of that. Do, uh, the prison entry program also assists people who may want to do training instead of just going straight to work? I mean, I, not that I know of. Um, I, I do know, let me correct myself, I do know the Wilmington Hope Commission had a program that was okay. teaching people uh, entry level uh, uh, construction skills, as well as uh, basic computer skills, as well as advanced computer skills. Right. Because uh, I do know that there are some com corporations like JP Morgan Chase that are interested in giving individuals a second chance if they had the skills. But I do think that's an area of improvement. Um, vocational opportunities are limited for a lot of people on reentry simply because in Delaware, funding for vocational training is based off of employment outcomes. And I think vocational training providers find it difficult to place individuals with a background with some of their employment connections. Right, right, right. You know, when you look at success, uh, you, you mentioned Denzel Washington, for example. Um, one of the top actors of all time. He's always in some of the greatest movies. Um, I really love him in Malcolm X and, 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 and some other movies. Um, but with success, you know, people see where you are now, but they may not realize that rejection plays a big part uh, in, in regards to um, how successful you want to be. For example, um, some of us, you know, we, we apply for a job or we, we apply for a role, or we apply for this, that, and the other, and third, and we, we get rejected. And then all of a sudden our, low, our esteem is low. And we to the point where you know we may just give up uh, because we got rejected about one, two, three, four more times, and we just say, you know what, I'm just not good enough. So um, I don't know if you covered this in your book or not, but 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 speak for a moment, if if you will, um, in terms of how how do people overcome rejection when when dealing with, with success? So I say two things to that because we don't talk specifically about rejection in the book, okay. but. Um, one of the things we do talk about in the book is motivational factors and your motivational factors help you deal with rejection when it comes because any successful person has experienced failure. So when that rejection or that failure comes, you have to have something there that motivates you, a power that's greater than yourself to get you back on track. The second thing I'll say about rejection is you have to be willing to face and take a risk of rejection. Fear of rejection is just a fear, and I believe fear to be false evidence of being real, right? So even if you are rejected, that doesn't mean you can't accomplish the goal that you had at hand. You just have to do it a different way, you know? And, and just being coming from the experience I've had and being all the way at rock bottom by like being incarcerated, being at the lowest of the bottom, like, I don't um, have time to pay no attention to rejection, right? Because I have a goal that I need to accomplish. I know that me dwelling on rejection and allowing uh, anger or frustration to get in the way could lead to a bad decision. And people like myself and others who've come home and done great things say, we always have to make good decisions because one bad day can land you back incarcerated. Right, right. Uh, so, so, so going back to, to your book, um, when you completed the book and you got it published and you became a newly author, what was that feeling like? <laughs> Man, honestly, little brother, I'm still taking it all in, all right? <laughs> like, I mean, people are like, you should be promoting the book more and doing book signings, but I'm just like so humble and, and like, I want to say honor <laughs> that I'm a published author. Like, you know, one thing I, I, I can honestly say, like even in jail, I had a lot of people in jail that say like, you want to write a book one day. And I've had people outside of jail, but a lot of elders, oh, a lot of older people that like seen the ambition in me, they was like, you're going to write a book one day. So like now that I've actually published my first book, it, it, I feel like, 
I've accomplished a level of success, right? I myself went to a higher level of success by filling ambitions and potential that's always been there. You know what I mean? But now it's time to keep going. Like we're talking about consistency. It's time to create a library, create a whole online store of books. Right, right, definitely. So, 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 Brother Lee, so is this, did you go through a publisher or, or is this book self published? Yeah, I did. Shout out to Jazzy Kitty Publishing. I, I worked with uh, Miss Anelda. She is great. Um, she can work with anybody. I mean, just for any aspiring authors out there, she could take a manuscript that's written on with paper and pencil, right? And work with it. Um, but you could uh, Google Jazzy Kitty, check out her website. Um, her prices are fair compared to other publishers. And she's local right here in Delaware. And I think she did a phenomenal job with my book. Right. You know, um, family members can, can, can be your, your biggest supporters as well as your biggest critics at the same time. Um, so, so when you finish the book, I'm not sure if you share it with your family or not, but, 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 but just the fact that you wrote a book, um, what type of support did you get from, from your parents, and your, your sibling, your, your wife, your children? I mean, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles? Uh, did, did you receive a lot of family support about the book? Oh, definitely. All my close family have bought a book. And when we have been together uh, since the book has come out, their, their folks and the people that was at the gathering or whomever bought a book. Everybody is highly uh, supportive. Um, the books have been going hand in hand. Uh, people have been willing to pay the online price of $15, although they're only 10 if you buy it from me. Um, and, and the support is overwhelming. Um, and then I, I don't have the records yet, but we'll have them in the next like few weeks. But you could definitely get the book on Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble. I also have uh, family and friends who are not close to me who have sent me texts or inboxes and let me know that they have ordered the book. So, you know, I'm not just on the corner hustling it. You can go online if you're more comfortable with that. Like I said, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. It's the four keys to success by Hanif Salam. Everybody, did you uh, go? You have the book with you right now? I do in, in the building, but it's in the car, so I don't oh, have it physically okay. with me. Oh, okay, because I want to um, um, shout I, I out to Fire and Ice. I'm in the Fire and Ice recording studios, and okay. I was rushing in here. I meant to have them so I can hold them up. I was talking to your brothers, so great minds think alike. But I love coming in the car. But if somebody wants to come to me, if you inbox me on Facebook, I am right in Newark right now at the Fire and Ice Recording Studios. And I do have books on me right now. Okay, so so you know, when I, when I was thinking about the show earlier, and I was thinking, I was saying, you know, I, I, wonder, I wonder if Brother Hanif, you know, you, you spoke earlier about, you know, book signings and you know, possibly going on tour. And so, so I was thinking, you know, you say you had a, a, a background in, in prison. Uh, do, do you look to go inside the prisons to, 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 to read the book and uh, you know, maybe speak to, to the prisoners uh, about the book and encourage them to be motivated and positive and, and have, a, have a goal in place once you get out? Yes, most definitely. My first step in that is uh, I'm working on a proposal. I'm hoping that um, the Department of Corrections and the Department of Education are both by the book. Like not only to be able to give the prisoners and then I can do follow up talks about the book, but to give it out to the schools. One thing that um, I made it short and I also made it easy to read and easy to comprehend because in my opinion, as somebody at an eighth grade level could read this book. So it's something that the youth could get into as well, as well as seniors. And then it's, it's a small book. So the words are a nice print, big enough for individuals to see and everything like that. So I want everybody to get into it because I just want people to talk about how they could be successful in their life. Because success isn't just about a career or sport and entertainment. Success is whatever you define it in your life. Right. You know, um, and one of the things that, that, that I think you mentioned earlier was you had to have you know, confidence in what you do. And unfortunately, there are those of us who got the skills and the talent to, to be successful and, 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 and to, to advance and grow and be promoted. But some of us, unfortunately, we're afraid of success. We're, we're afraid to make that, 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 that next move because we, we're in our comfort zone. We want to be content and we want to stay where we're at because it's comfortable 
it's easy. We know it. And sometimes we're, we're just afraid to go outside that box to, to, to go to level five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So, so what, what do you say to those who may have some type of fear or uh, just, just a little hesitation in terms of uh, we reaching our highest potential? Yes, definitely. So, you know, one thing is you, you, I say you have to be confident in yourself and you can't be scared of the unexpected. You have to take chances in life, right? And one thing that I'm able to relate with individuals who have had hard times in their life is the fact that, you know, if you overcame those hard times, then you could do what it is that's necessary to be successful. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you have to right. be consistent. Like I was saying earlier, you know what I mean? Like just because you applied to one job and went on one interview and they said no, doesn't mean nobody's gonna hire you. If you really want a job, that means all day, every day, you should be applying to multiple jobs. Five, six different companies every day, every day, every day until you get that job and get that. You truly know. achieve your goals. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's good. You, you, you went out, you went out a little bit on this. Uh, so if you want to say that last part again. Yeah, I, and I'm sorry for the unstable connection, but I was just saying if you stay consistent, then you'll be able to achieve your goals. Like you, you're going to have shortcomings, you're going to have failures, but you have to stay consistent and willing to stay on your grind and keep trying and keep putting yourself out there because if you know what you want, then you can achieve it. Right. That's another key to facing those fears, good brother. You got to believe in your own mind that you could be successful and achieve. Like you said, we get in our own way because we put too much doubt in our head. I can't do this or I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you have to believe in yourself. I sit back and watch myself and say, uh, all the schools want to want me to talk about the book. You know what I mean? People are going to reach out to me and it's been happening. You reached out to me. I was just on the show last week and I'm not, I never brag, but I'm just saying when you picture yourself doing what you want to do, then right. those things start to come to life. Right, right. You know, one of the things that that that, that, that was unexpected to me also, um, you know, when uh, Ms. Rashima Dixon, when she um, decided to, to vacate uh, her city council at large position, uh, you were one of the individuals who, who had applied for um, to, to go for that city council at large position. So um, what made you want to uh, apply for um, a city council at large position or be a candidate, whatever terms you want to use? Yeah, I think may have went out. Maybe have some more technical difficulties. Uh, once again, my special guest is Hanis Salam. He's the author of the newly book, um, Four Keys to Success. It's a new book that he wrote. Um, talking about how to be successful in life, how to be successful in our goals and aspirations and inspirations. Um, all right. So we're going to take a just a little short break. I think he's um, having some technical difficulties. We'll see if we can get him back. You're watching Showtime TV. Okay, we got we got brother Neat back. He's coming back, yo. Right. Right, no, but, my fault, brother, man. My fault. Okay. I think I should be with this connection. 
Uh, okay, no, no problem. Okay, so um, one of the questions would be before before you get going out, I asked about you, you ran for the position of uh, city council at large when uh, Mr. Priscilla Dixon decided to step down. So, uh, what made you uh, decide to run for city council at large? Well, I mean, if you do the history, I, I did it when Representative Tukulcha, uh vacated the first district seat. Oh, okay. uh, I just be understanding the process of filling a vacant city council seat, um, knowing that it is up to the decision of council. Um, I just both times then and now wanted to ensure that I was doing my duty as a resident and giving them a good option to pick for city council because I have a firm understanding of city government. I've worked with helping people for most of my career and uh, local politics is something that I've always been involved and passionate about. So, um, you know, I'm not too excited about campaigns um, just because of the way that campaign finances and the money that things go into politics and campaigns, but to fill a seat, I thought it would be good and do a civic duty to make sure I applied and presented a good option for the city council. Okay, now, now just talk about the process for a moment because it wasn't like uh, where the community had opportunity to, opportunities to, to vote for a particular candidate. Because uh, I, I, I don't know how many people who all applied for it. Uh, and I know Brother Albert Mills was the one who uh, was uh, given the position or selected for the position. So. Did you have to go through an interview process? Uh, did you have to meet with certain individuals? How, how, how did that go about? So it was an application process. And to my understanding, uh, city council chose to uh, interview all candidates that applied and were eligible for the position. There were 19 candidates interviewed. So Ooh. those interviews that everyone was seeing live, those were the interviews for the position. And then the way city ordinance is written, city council selects an individual and then they vote on the uh, selection as a whole body. And the selection is in place until the next city election. But there are people looking into that saying, hey, there's a Delaware State primary. Wouldn't it make sense just to put that city spot as an election? a special election um, since you had to fill the spot so the people can have true representation of who they want. Right. So in, in the future, do, do you foresee yourself uh, possibly running again for another position or the same position? Uh, maybe in the long-term future, but definitely not in 2022 or in 2024. I like the position that I am in and elevating the community's voice especially people and families that have been impacted by the justice system and having the ability to reach out and conversate with our elected officials to let them know the community's perspective and also to talk about brainstorming and implementing solutions. So I like being in that role. Um, I like being at the ACLU of Delaware, um, which I'm currently employed right now. So I, I see myself holding steady with what I'm doing and possibly taking more speaking engagements if people want to hear more about yeah. the book or how to right. maintain a positive perspective. Okay, and your, your current position with the ACLU, um, how long have you been there? Um, did you did you interview for the position or, or did, did they recruit you? How how did you go about uh, getting that position? Because you haven't been there that long, right? If I, if I'm staying correct. Yeah, I've been there a little over a year. I've been there about 14 months. Okay. Um, so I was not recruited. Uh, <laughs> okay. That position was actually a very competitive position okay. to my understanding. And the number may be a little bit exaggerated, but it was close to 100 people that applied oh. for that position in state and out of state. And um, you know, uh, upon getting the job, I was just told that uh, my experience within the reentry and nonprofit realm, as well as my volunteer service as a community leader and advocate, is is really and based on how I did in my interview, is what landed me the job. So I'm I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be the campaign manager for Smart Justice and lead efforts on a legislative uh, effort.
Right. Uh, so, so you, you're also a community activist. I, I see uh, where you're involved with so some demonstrations and protests <laughs> over the last couple of years. Um, how, how did you get involved in or uh, want to be involved in community activism? I mean, you might have touched on it a little earlier, but 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 you know, you, you don't talk about, you're out there in the front line. You was marching and protesting, and demonstrating. Uh, I seen on uh, Facebook uh, several times. Uh, so, what made you want to be involved in um, community activism? Honestly, Mother Omar, and, and I got to keep it real, and, and I got to give a shout out, um, RIP, RIP to good brother uh, uh, Omar Hassan L, man. Okay. Um, like, when we did that show with me, him, and Priest, and I think Timeless Thomas, yeah. um, that was my first time meeting Timeless, who I'm still working with then. But right. when I sat back and reflected, I was like, I could do more. Like I was working at the Hope Commission then. I was volunteering for Smart Justice. You know, I was involved with South Bridge Civics Association and things of that nature. But I was just like, I could do more. And then I seen families like uh, Keandra McDowell out protesting and advocating for justice for her brother Jeremy. And then I seen Lakeisha Nix out advocating and protesting for justice for her brother. So I started joining them in their efforts. And if they said they was going out somewhere, I was going out with them, you know, just to help elevate the voice and just to say that these things aren't right. You know what I mean? Because I don't think it's right for an unarmed black man to be killed. You know what I mean? Without nobody being held accountable. You know what I mean? And I don't want to get into a debate, but I mean, even if you right. got weed on, but it, that don't mean that I die. Like, so, you know, I, I started joining with them and, and, you know, once I hear that somebody's out, I, I try to join in because I believe it's all a part, right? We have to uh, express our First Amendment rights, right? When we feel like things aren't right, we have to be in communication with elected officials and we have to be bringing viable solutions to the table. So I'm always going to be a part of the solution from every angle. Right. You know, um, in terms of success, um, there are those that that, that that we look to it that we admire because they're successful and we want to take a chapter of that book in terms of uh basis this is successful as they are so are there any individuals out there who who you come to admire um, maybe on a local level or a national level to say you know what that brother that sister really really they, they really do it they they they, they kicking jewels and they really doing their thing <laughs> definitely definitely i I will say. Um, first, my pop, Stan Salam, okay. I definitely respect and admire, you know what I mean? Uh, he, he has been through ups and downs just like myself. And and for him to be a man of God now, an ordained reverend, you know what I mean? Working for a Fortune 500 company, you know what I'm saying? It, it's busy. Uh, yeah. so I, I respect that, you know what I'm saying? And then my mentor is Marla Blunt Carter. Right, okay. and if people aren't familiar with Marla Blunt Carter, she's an associate professor at Rutgers University. She's worked for uh, Biden for president. She worked for Biden when he was a senator in Delaware. She worked on the Obama for president campaign, and she is just a, a big force in the social work field, uh, empowering individuals who want to get a degree in that area and make a difference. So she really taught me a lot about grant writing and nonprofits when I was first getting started. Right. And shout out to my younger brother. My little brother went to North Carolina A&T after high school and never came back to Delaware. And now he works for a Fortune 500 company, been employed for uh, American Express for, uh, you know, probably like 15 years now. So, you know, those are the three people that come to mind. You say people I look up to or admire. Right, that, 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 that is that is that that is so awesome. And so I can't me, leave out Mom Dukes. I can't say three people that <laughs> leave out Mom Dukes. So oh, yeah, I don't you gotta leave out Mom, yeah. Mom Dukes. I wouldn't be who I am. And for that, it's the wife, Kadir, the kids, Jakira and Jakira, my grandma, all my family, friends, anybody who I have had interactions with or have dropped a gem or a C in me, I pay homage to you. Much respect. For helping me to be the man that I am today. Right. So, so, so you're you're going to have many more interviews, and and one common question that that, that people are going to ask you. So I'm just going to go ahead and ask you as well. 
Uh, what do you want people to, to, to get out the book? <laughs> what I want people to get out the book is to truly identify their purpose and to take their life to a higher level of success. I firmly believe that success is a journey, not an event. So even those of us who consider ourselves successful, we can always take things to another level. And I want you to get the you're in line with your purpose and then be able to take your life to another level. Right. You know, um, another common question you're going to be asked, you know, since you wrote this, wrote this first book, people are going to ask, uh, when you, when you write the next book, <laughs> they said, so do, do, do you have plans on writing another book? Definitely, definitely. The, the, the It's already in the works. Uh, the oh. second book is going to be How to Get a Job with a Criminal Background. It's going to oh. be another self <laughs> <laughs> book, and it's going to be specifically for people who have been in the system. But I guarantee you it have some tools and techniques that can help anybody get a job, even if you don't have a record. But mm -hmm. that's going to be the next book. Hey, so I want to ask you, you know, uh, when you're talking about uh, prison reentry before, you know, uh, you, you work with, with, with prisoners and quote unquote ex felons, you help them get, get, you know, get jobs and things of nature there. So, so, so when brothers say, brother Neath, man, I, I really appreciate what you did for me, man. Without you, I wouldn't be able to feed my family. I wouldn't be able to feed myself. I wouldn't be able to have the self confidence I do to, to move on in life. So, so when, when an individual says that to you, how does that make you feel? If they, if they said it to you, I mean, I'm, I'm just assuming, but I'm not sure. Yeah, no, yeah, you definitely on the money with that. I definitely hear it. And honestly, good brother, this is what I do it for, right? I need a check to feed my family, but when I hear I need I'm still working, or I need if it wasn't for you, I'd be back in jail, but I don't live like that. Like that's what I do it for, man. Like I've been through so much and I feel like I've done so much dirt that I'm committed to living positive and influence people in a positive manner for one. I want my life to be pleasing under God, but to me, the biggest fulfillment, the one of the biggest joys in the world is knowing that I help somebody think differently so that they could live differently. And somebody who thought they'd be stuck in the streets and the slums forever is now living a good life, man, because I live it every day and I enjoy right. my life. So when I'm able to help other people come into this energy and come into this lifestyle, it's a beautiful film. Right. So 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 before we close out, I want to ask you once again, this is your, your first book that you wrote. Um, is there anything about the writing process, the bit uh, uh publishing the book that, that you that you may have learned that, that you didn't know before? That's a good question, brother. So what I will say is you need to get you a publisher, <laughs> use Jazzy <laughs> Kitty publishing to check prices. Um, because that's about the fairest that I found. But okay. I, the, the great thing about a publisher is there are a lot of particulars and nuances that you have to go through to take your book from being an actual manuscript right. to being an actual book. And you can learn it and self-publish if you have to, if you want to take the time and have the time. But right. if you have a publisher, especially one as good as Jazzy Kitty, like I said, all you have to do is take the idea from your head and put it on paper, type it up or write it up, and then your publisher can help you get to that finish line of having an actual book and not having just an actual book that you can sell out the trunk, but also having it on online platforms where you'll have opportunity to generate residual income as well. Yeah, and the thing about being online is that you can sell you could purchase the book from all over, all over the world. <laughs> all over the world. It's the World Wide Web, good brother. Right, right. All right, so brother Nee, so, so, so let me ask you, so, so once again, this for my individuals who are watching how they can get the book, and then um, if those who want to invite you to be on a, speak, a speaking engagement or have you come to their facility and sell the books, how, how can they get in contact with you? Yes, definitely, definitely. So the four keys to success by Hanu Salam, you can get it on Amazon.com. BarnesandNotable.com or directly from me, Hanif Salam. Uh, you can get in contact with me on Facebook, Hanif Salam. That is an easy way to get in contact with me. You can also get in contact with me through Instagram, Hanif302, right? For bookings and speaking engagements, you can give me a call directly at 302. 250 1393. Again, for booking and speaking engagements, 
You can contact me directly by phone at 302-250-1393. Or if you're more comfortable connecting through social media, you could do that as well. Okay, but so I definitely, I definitely want to say that um, you will see uh, more promotion and I will be um, going on tour with the book uh, coming soon, late April, early May. So look out for it. We'll definitely go online and get your copy today. Okay, so about two minutes remaining. So if you have any closing comments you want to just give any any words of encouragement, words of motivation to those who are watching, just, just, just a word, just, just a positive message. So what I want to say to everybody that's watching is anybody that wants to be successful will be successful. That's where it starts. It starts out what you want in life. What do you want for yourself? And you got to get in tune with that. You got to understand your purpose. You got to understand and set up goals, long-term and short-term goals. If you get the four keys to success, it'll even walk you through the process of creating your very own success plan. I have a success plan. And if you talk to most successful people, they have a plan for what got, to, got them to where they are today. And they also have a plan to where they are going in the future. And this is what I want to help individuals do. Create a plan for your life that will help you to fulfill your purpose. And always remember, man, you got to work hard and stay on your grind. Hard work and consistency is the key to getting you from your goals to accomplishments. Because I truly believe that your dreams can be your reality. And once you make them your reality, then you could dream bigger dreams. So continue to be positive. Continue to show love to others and strive to make your dreams a reality. Awesome. I want to thank uh, everyone for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, Brother Hanif. Uh, thank you once again for being a guest. Uh, much success. And uh, maybe it's better bring you back on uh, the next couple of months just to get a follow up. Anytime. Uh, thanks for having me today, good brother. I appreciate it. And I will always be willing to come when you reach out. All right, peace. All right, all right. Stay safe, everybody. God bless. Have a safe week. All right, brother. Lee, take care. All right, thanks a lot, good brother. All right.